In the first lecture, I thought, the first beginning of, I thought it, I'm going to give you a lecture on congestion and on what finding we can find on a supine X-ray. But then it happens that I got to give you the pitfalls, which I didn't really, I thought it's much easier to do. And then at the end, I change it to a, a different lecture. So, uh, you uh, have yeah. it? So, what can we do with this miserable, all hated <laughs> supine chest feeling that we don't know how to read? And basically, do we need to know uh, what the problem is that all of the supine x are bad? Almost 100% of them are bad. Look at this one. You, it's dark on one side. It's dark on the left side. It's white on the uh, right side. You see it on, the, on the, the soft tissue. Uh, the hard size, I'm not sure I know if it's big or if it's not so big, but it's silhouetted. The trachea is not visible. It's supposed to be visible, except if the patient is uh, If the patient is no, no breathing, it must be have a trachea somewhere, which I don't see on this film. Moreover, the problem is that if we do continuous CT, a continuous film, we see that each one looks different. This is what an 8, 9, 10, and 11 typical uh, uh, intensive care film. This is dark, this is white, this is rotated to the right, this is rotated to the left, this is in between, and this is a very strange taken. So with this film, there is a density on this side. This is same, it's improved, great. But then on the next day, it's come again. Does it come again, or is there a different technique? Very hard to say. So. We all hate this film. So do we need to know how to read them? Yes, because statistically, 40% of all examination, including everything that you saw, including mammography, including MRI, including isotopes, including ultrasound, including everything, 40% of them are chest film. So it's around 420 cases a day. 40% of them are supine, so we have to know it. Now, I know there will be coming a time when we will not need a, a, a film at all, but until then, until as we have more than 10, uh, more 130 cases a day in our hospital, and I believe the numbers are different in each place, but the percentage is the same, we need to know how to read it, even if it's so difficult. So, looking at the forest, we, we, have, we don't know, see much, but if we go to details, we see beautiful things. So, I would suggest that you regret, regard the chest film, even if it's so ugly and unpleasant, to look for the beautiful, or oh, it's not beautiful, important things that are sitting there and they have to be seen. So I change the name to Respect and Suspect, and uh, as the first time I do the Respect because I think it may help, and this one it's what we are needed for. The question, no question about this one. Is the patient, the, the film is terrible done, and once we don't know what's wrong, wrong with the left side, but we definitely know that something wrong with the tube, and there is a telectasis. Which, if you, we, we call it in time, the patient is a chest tube is elevated a little and film change into normal, or relatively normal. So, does it important? Yes, it is very important, and you have to know how to read those films. Taking this kind of film, there is no question, everybody can say that the aorta is large. So, film is lousy, it's expiratory, it's white, we don't see much, but definitely aortic aneurysm is suspected. If you want to know, you have to go further examining it. So, the, the chest supine film give you an answer. 
And with this one, which is lying down, emergency room, intubated, very grainy, very grainy as you can see on the, on the soft tissue area, still you see the tube, still you see the infiltrate, and some infiltrate of the other one, so it's not surprising the city will look like this, coming with a, a upper lobe and going to the middle lobe and the other side, infiltrates, and diagnosis of pneumonia was made, which is a different, it's a need in another lecture, special lecture. There is no question we can see congestion on this film and congestion on this film, and there is another lecture only on congestion, okay? Uh, what about this one? You have to, whenever you see uh, supine you, a, a film, you look for lines. So there is a one line here, coming from the neck to the abdomen. You need to know what it is. There is another line coming up that's trachostomy, and always look for the balloon. The balloon is usually getting into trouble. Uh, so always look if the balloon is not too wide. Then there is, I know that you see it, a telectasis of the left lower lobe. Right? Everybody saw it? And you can see it even better. The balloon is overinflated and the lower lobe is a telectatic and that's uh, when the film is very good done. What about this film which is very lousy? Expiratory, big heart, big adjustment, fat patient. You have to look very carefully in everything and I know for 100% that all of you saw the narrowing of the trachea. So the trachea is part of trachea is part of reading each uh, and every film supine or erect and one of the most uh, areas that is missing in re our, our reading pathologism. Okay, what about this film? Uh, Patient collapsed at uh, 5 a.m. in the uh, middle, almost morning. Was in the hospital uh, from the evening. And the nice audiologist said, what's a congestion, don't mind. So there is one way to, if you really want to, uh, if they really want to, to have a CT in the middle of the night and said, are you sure she doesn't have PE? No, I don't. So do a CT <laughs> So if the patient, if a, if a radiology doesn't really want to do a CT for other reason, he has to do a CT on the PE question. So the patient was done on the CT angle a few minutes later, reluctantly, reluctantly by the audiologist. And that was a finding, and that's a different story. Uh, we'll talk, uh, you have a very good lecture on this, on the first one. And that was a PCP. So it's infection in the different story. It's not, a, it was done on the CT angle basis, but I didn't wrote the CT angle. So PCP is one of the problems that should be suspected in a film that looks not so bad. Minimal changes, infiltrate all over in the patient which is immunocompromised. What about this one? That's a that's easy one. That's really easy one. And especially if you know the patient is post pleural biopsy and you see nematorx on lying down. But you always think you need to think when think when things doesn't look well, you have to to try to analyze them. So you got a, a strange line here, which is not anatomically. There is some infiltrate here, which is because there is a remaining of the pleural fluid. And there may be a line here. So uh, you have to think about pneumothorax each time, especially uh, mainly when the patient is post uh, tube, uh, post uh, fluid uh, removal, but even without it. 
and that's when it's enlarged, you see it better. So when, I don't know, really know why, but now it's a fact, is it plural, plural line, meaning this line, and it's uh, true for any pneumotorosis. It's very difficult to see on, um, on a digital film, I don't know exactly why. I know it's a fact. So whenever you think there is pneumotorosis, you do a large film, and it's easy with our machine, so a large film, and suddenly you will see the pneumotorax that you haven't suspected before. That's true on supine film and true on uh, erect film as well. What, what about this film? There was... Uh, okay. Before I continue, I want you to remind you that we have to look on all the lines before we try to interpret the film. So we'll do everything. Regularly, check the trachea, it's into, there is a tube here, probably the zonda as well. There is, you see, subclavian line there, and whenever there is subclavian line, you have to ask when it was inserted, and the next thing you have to answer is the pneumothorax. So if you do it systematically, you have to question, is the pneumothorax on this side, and suddenly things begin to, to fall in line, if this is a diaphragm on, on the right, where is on the left one? Somewhere here. Things are not good and the suspicious of pneumothorax with a strange color on this side, which is, here you got lines of vessels in the lung and here you don't have any line and the color is white and black together. Problem is of uh, air and fluid and patient lying down. So the suspicious of pneumothorax should be aroused very easily. So it was done, and the patient had a chest tube, but still, there is a strange line coming down here. Mediastinum is okay, diaphragm is probably getting better, but there's still this line. It is a few hours, the first one was on 5, this is 7.30, so chest CT was performed, which was not really needed. Uh, whenever you look at the I told you before all, all the lines, so you see there is a uh, chest tube was inserted, but it's going up, 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 up to here. Slightly strange position of the chest tube. Whenever you think line, you have to ask if it's in, they are in the right position. And remember, we are talking about two-dimensional lousy film on a three-dimensional person. So from our point of view, the patient can lie down on the chest tube or the chest tube is putting on his chest, or anywhere in between. Uh, and what we can we see, there is still big pneumothoraxis. And the question of the strange, not white, not black, on the first femur, on the first uh, uh, chest that I show on this one, is this explanation because it's so dark in front and so white in black, when the X-ray of a regular film look coming from front to back, that's AP film, you, as an X-ray, take a black area here, white area here, in between is gray. And it doesn't look like there's something there sometimes. So whenever the pneumothorax is really anterior, it's going to be missed on the, on, on the supine chest film. Okay, we got the forest, and uh, as I told you, we have to look very carefully to find what we wanted to see. And we started to see the monkey only if we know there is one. So we have to look at it. That's fast, just to make you laugh. And what about this patient? So, again, lousy, expiratory, everything wrong. And remember, 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 the first one is asked, I don't, okay, you saw? With this last film, what's, what's wrong? What? Right. Yeah. It's not, doesn't, doesn't look much better now. Uh, oh, maybe it's better. Okay. 
Well, if it's a taste, it wouldn't be sin, but it's a whole line of them. So always, always look at the track here, look at the main bone high, you will some you will find surprises. And what about this one? That's for the suspect. Okay? It's just expiratory thing. So sometimes when things are not fit and you always ask, repeat the film, please do a repeat film. And especially when the film doesn't fit the clinical position, so it's only, only a lying down film. So be very careful. That's why again, I could put the names, respect and suspect, and in Hebrew I said, I even, even me didn't believe it's the same patient. So different. Okay, so for, up to here I put you all, all, all things that you can see. So chest film does help and you can see. But now I show you a few things that this film are not so good. And you have to, to look at the film as whenever in emergency room, no, in intensive care room. You don't like the, the clinical condition versus the film it doesn't improve as you think or get worse as you think. Do a CT. I'm very easy in doing a CT on intensive care patient because I know there are a lot of findings that I can't see on the film. So about lung. So pine, X, or typical, typical chest uh, supine film, expiratory, big heart, big mediastinum, high diaphragm, no, no specific finding. I would say no gross pathology except on CT is a big mass. Okay? Next. Supine, the heart is not big, patient is younger, no big pathology, the patient has this. Uh, so, there are areas in the chest film that are, are not good to be seen on supine, they are not good to be seen on erect, and sometimes the lateral is the only one that helps us. And those are the below the diaphragm area, the hilar area, the below the clavicle area, like in this one. Go back to this. <coughs> Is it here, just below the first degree? So, first strip area is a problematic area behind the heart is a problematic area below the diaphragm is a problematic area just posterior to the sternum is a problematic area so there are only a few areas that are not problematic that are around here which unfortunately the tumor doesn't like to 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 be there then. okay what about this line this was easy Patient is uh, with infection, is a lower lobe infiltrate, and they go to chest tube or brachiostomy. I'm not sure. You got a line. Remember, each time you look at the film, you have to check the lines. The jugular had some surgery up here, and the surprise was that he had the density. So he had an infiltrate lower down there, that's okay, but those which represent all of a different story of, uh, of uh, infiltrates, roundish, irregular, uh, it's a different lecture, wasn't, weren't seen on the film, even when we, I enlarged it and looked for it and followed it for a whole week to see if it, maybe it will, disappear, it will appear on the film, no, it, they didn't. Patient remain normal on the chest film and abnormal on the city. What about this one? I myself, the two selection doesn't know which is which. Expiratory, infiltrate on both sides, uh, wide mediastinum, and you got a big rib lesion. Definitely, you couldn't see the tumor inside the. Uh, uh, liver or the lymph gland paracardia. And this, this film was done previously when he was erect and the tumor can be seen here. Okay? Minor changes of the pleura. Rib is not continuously. 
So it was known, but I show, I will show you, I'll go back to the, to the lesion. And when I say there is no gross pathology, remember, there is a gross pathology in this case, which couldn't be seen on the film. So that's for the suspect. What about this? <coughs> there is minimal obliteration of the left costophrenic angle. The left line is slightly darker, but the film is regular. It's all of the film. I don't know if it's wrong with us or it's wrong everywhere. Most of the film are bad. So it's rotated. It's uh, black and white, not right. Uh, question if there's something in the mediastinum. And there is the other problematic problem that we don't see the vertebra, as long as we don't see the sternum. Okay, sternum is, is missing, and the vertebra, the broken vertebra or the situs, with the white mediastinum around it, and I'll call back the film, nothing. So remember, there are very, there are a lot of loose uh, areas that are not seen on the film. That's for suspect. Okay, I put this for the air fluid level. To remind me, we're going to a patient where there is no question of pathology on the right base. There is a pneumonia there. There is a, a, a very unique uh, tracheostomy. Lousy film on this film on this side, but the. Only thing we didn't know, and it is important, is that all the infiltrate on the left side are, are abscesses. And there is a big difference, as again, it's a different lecture about abscesses and the regular pneumonia. So, air fluid level is something that we don't see on a supine film. Let's take this film. There is some uh, big pacemen going to the head. It's okay, it's known, it's on purpose going there. It, it, there's definitely an infiltrate on the left lower lobe, there's something on the right hallum. So the, there was no question about uh, something wrong with the film. The only question is why the patient is not getting better. And on, on, on the CT we saw there is a, the big infiltrate on this side, which we knew, and it was uh, treated accordingly. But the lung abscess that was missing on the, was missing on the film. I put this film. Mm -hmm. I put this this film as this reconstruction to show you where is the abscess sitting on re relative to the supine film and ask you if one will play to the patient is better or worse. Meaning, does this? is the same and so the abscess is still present or not because it's a supine we don't know. So air fluid level is one thing that we are we absolutely don't know about, including other things that we don't know about with chess. Okay, this was a typical case like in the one o'clock in the afternoon or oh, in the noon. I got a phone asking you, can you explain me what's wrong with this patient? He doesn't have fever, he didn't have previous uh, fluid, he did have previous pneumonia. Is it, is it uh, unsuspected pleural effusion? I said, yes, it's unsuspected pleural effusion with the adhesion, with loculation. He said, it's impossible, it doesn't fit. So what do you do with this patient? You don't want to drag everyone to the CT. So I had a very excellent idea, do a supine crossover, and if this moves to the other side, so I asked to do uh, the cube film lying on this side, move the fluid to the mediastinum, we get two things. If it clear up, it's fluid. If it doesn't clear up, it will show you the lung and tell you what's wrong with the lung. So this beautiful idea brought us to this film. We said, wow. Nobody really suspected that you have air fluid level on, if, all over the pleura. Now the question is why? And it's a different lecture, but air fluid level in the pleura need to be very, considered very seriously than if the patient wasn't punctured before. So there should be a reason for this. And the question was, of, did he have a lung abscess or something else? Uh, as it caused it because there was no fluid tape, flu, pleural taping. And we did a CT, it's all fluid. And again, 
because there's air and fluid, but majority is fluid. There's a lot of lung behind it. On the film, it does look like only fluid. And there was no lung, lung pathology, and the tet uh, even though the patient didn't have fever, he had MPM. Okay. Next one is chest tube. The, almost all of them, uh, a lot of them do have chest tube, and we need to look for them and to look where they are seated. Okay. Typical, typical film. Uh, you got a tube here, you got a chest tube there. Does the chest tube look okay? Yeah, it does look okay. It's here, the, we have to look for the hole. The hole is in place. Everything okay, except it doesn't drain. So we had the CT and definitely it doesn't drain because it's not in the pleura. It's in the lung. And a lot of, of, lot of chest tube, if you look carefully, are not in the right place. As they are too deep or not too deep or not in the pleura. And you can see that not only the, the, what we thought was in the right place, it's definitely in the wrong place because there is still big pneumothorax, but the tube is damaging the lung on this side and on this as well. And it should be, re, should be removed, at least part of it should be removed, <coughs> drawn back to not allow for, for damaging Damaging was already done. Not allowed to continue damaging the lung. And there is no question that the film later look like there is a density here. And sometimes it remained as a round lesion in the lung, the location of where the chest tube was inserted before. And again, you see lying down. Air is in, air is in front, fluid not so much here, in the back. And it's difficult to see on supine film. What about this one? Okay. This is a film. It's, it's always. It's not, the, I, I did it on purpose. They all look bad. You get one chest tube, is location somewhere in here, to the. There is another chest tube located somewhere here. Meaning, each chest tube that they put didn't drain what they wanted to drain, so they put another one instead of looking what's wrong with the first one. So, the first one was too deep, the second one too deep, and they, they, so they inserted another one because this, the patient still was good, and the third one is here, outside. So, none of them were in the position. Three tubes and none of them was in the right position. I tried to figure out it's here. Do, do you see it better the third one? Mm -hmm. It's very difficult to see it because it's parallel to the ribs. Here, here, here. And the hole is somewhere outside. So this is too deep, too deep, and one outside. None of them walk as they are supposed to. Another problem is that a lot of we, we, we need to know which chest to wear inserted with, because there are few types of them. So the round abscess here, it's a tip of a, it's a balloon in a soft tissue a chest tube. There's a one in good position, chest tube. Another one is here with a balloon. And there are one here, I don't think we really see it, I know it's present, still there is fluid here in future. And this is post-surgery, all the clips. It's post uh, burns. Okay, what do we see on a CT? One chest tube is in the pleura. There's another balloon, the one that we saw up there, compressing the lung, it's not so good. There is a third one on the other side, is um, pressing the lung. Okay. You see the pleura is wide, that's a different story. It's not, it's not good that the visceral pleura is so thick. So what can you see on this one? That's a repeat film 10 days later. So they ch change the chest tube. You see the hole that the first one was created in the lung. You see there is another one was probably here because there is a line crossing. Probably there was a chest tube here. And this one is a, 
is the one that caused this one, okay?